one, Steve the Amateur Historian, walking below the old steel bridge, crossing from the east side of the river to the west side towards downtown. I wanted to go this way because I keep forgetting that this is a way to cross the river under the bridge here, but I also wanted to get to the vicinity of 3rd and Gleason, and the steel bridge is essentially Gleason crossing into the city, so 3rd and Gleason is like right up here. My only hope is I'll still be able to get there. On a new historic murders of Portland. So, yeah, Gleason, yeah, Third and Gleason's like right over there. I think, I think I can make it. Uh, I don't know, that takes me back across. I don't want to go that way. Huh. Part of Portland I don't see very often. Oh, trespassing. Don't climb the fence. Okay, well that worked out. Okay, wait a minute, how do I, oh wait, no, yes? I'm so close to where I wanna be. Splendid. All right, so I'm at first, this is theoretically first in Gleason, even though Gleason's up there, doesn't really start again till over there. All right. So barring any random discoveries going around the corner here no no this this is gonna take me where I want to go all right okay so now that drama's taken care of today I'm gonna bring you the story of the murder of a man named Louis Vargas killed back in 1902 so we're kind of on the northern fringe of Chinatown Chinatown's kind of this general area over here passing second in Gleason we're trying to get to third to Gleason third to Gleason and that's right here kind of where the bus is taken off where the street light is this is third and Gleason there's the old Portland firehouse still sitting here boarded up and fenced off did a video about this some time ago but yeah this this here is third and uh, Gleason Street. However, I know for a fact the part of Gleason Street, the general area I want to focus on is this area back here. Um, way, way, way back. Uh, you, some of the earliest pictures of Portland, pictures from like the 1890s, and it's a pre-1900. If you'll see pictures along the waterfront right up there, you'll see the Willamette Iron Works. It was a massive, massive facility, lots of buildings, and it took up just all this, I mean, think about it, it stretched from the river all the way back here, pretty much covered three blocks of land. And 3rd Avenue may have been a block closer, um, but for all intents and purposes, 3rd and Gleason was regarded essentially as, I guess, the entry point to the big old ironworks that were right over here, because that is the address given. In relation to June 20th, 1902. And I don't know if it was in a building or just in a space between buildings, but the body of Louis Vargas was discovered on the grounds of the Willamette uh, Ironworks uh, general facility here. He didn't work here. You know, initially when he was found, people didn't know why he would be here. He was found to have been beat in the head and that was uh, initially deemed the cause of death. And I want to say, in the end, they still deemed it was, you know, trauma to the head that killed him. However, after Vargas's body was discovered in this 
general area again we're talking a couple square blocks so I don't know if it was closer to the river if it was you know maybe it was found closer to this area and that's why they deemed third and Gleason as where he was found but it was also noted after they noted the trauma that he suffered to his head which seemed pretty quick oh that's what killed him they noticed discoloration on his neck so they, they started theorizing that maybe he was strangled to death after he was beaten uh, somewhere in this big old area so essentially what happened was a Charles Wagner who did work here showed up for work it was pretty early it was like 7 a.m. on June 20th found Louis Vargas dead on these grounds and immediately obviously contacted the police and you know it was one of those cases that the body had been just kind of obviously beaten and then just kind of stuffed uh, in with some boxes very very hastily hidden away like whoever did it either didn't intend on killing someone or just wasn't very skilled in that enterprise and didn't you know once he did it he kind of panicked and didn't really know what to do after that um, whatever the case it was very hastily done so it was easy to uncover and here's something interesting I mean fairly common for the time if uh, somebody turned up dead and the police didn't really have a lot to go on there was almost always an inference that it was probably just some random black person or some random Chinese person in the city that did it that was really you know that was like the fallback which I mean that was unfortunately pretty standard all over the country at that time and there was actually an early article like right after you know within 24 hours of Louis Vargas being discovered dead and the police not actually having any leads as of yet and the newspaper would record that the police suspected a black man it's not what it says <laughs> that's me paraphrasing what it actually said in the article who had a bad reputation in the north end and are searching for him you know considering this was in one of the first articles posted about the crime where you know intermingled in this they're saying we don't know what happened we don't know who did it things like that get peppered into news stories and you start to think like okay so are they just trying are they like setting the stage for when they just find a random person to take the fall for this crime I don't know. I see. Yeah, I see. You look around. All these buildings here are. There's either a parking lot or fairly new buildings. The Oregon Department of Transportation building. This building is definitely very new. Like, yeah, a lot of stuff in this area is not super old. And this was all the Willamette Ironworks back in the day. It was huge. And fairly conveniently for law enforcement. One of the first big leads they got was a guy from a guy named G. Paulson who said the night before uh, Vargas' body was found in this vicinity over there, over there, back there, somewhere in this area. Uh, he said that it was you know, late evening the night before, so probably within hours of Vargas turning up dead. And he was at a saloon. I can only assume a saloon in this area. I mean, they were scattered all over Portland like chicken pox back in the day. And he said that he saw Vargas in that saloon. Again, this is probably just a couple hours before his passing. And he was with a he was with a black man. And they were apparently drinking together and hanging out. People in the saloon, in addition to this Paulson guy, said uh, they noticed. Um, they said they had the impression that Vargas had a lot of money on him. Maybe he was buying drinks for people. I don't know. Um, and he had a gold watch on him that I guess wasn't on him when he was discovered. I swear, every single person who lived in Portland who owned a gold watch back in these days turned up dead somewhere. All, so many cases where people turn up dead, they're like, so-and-so had a gold watch on him that wasn't on him when they were found. Just, if you lived back in the day, don't have a gold watch. That's, that's the moral of all this stuff. But the fact of the matter is we now have somebody who is seen with Vargas. And they quickly came to the conclusion that it was an individual... Um, I don't know what his first name is. They refer to him as A. Gladysy. At least that's how I'm assuming the name is pronounced because I have to pull it back up. It, it's a very interesting spelling for his last name. Uh, a. Gladysy. G-L-A-D-I-S-S-E-E. -S -S -E -E. Gladysy. I'm assuming that's how his name was pronounced. So he came under fire um, pretty quick. And... Something that didn't benefit him, because you're thinking like, okay, they post in the newspaper that they think it's a black guy. And then afterward, 
they get a lead from a guy who says, oh, this Vargas guy was leaving with someone of that race. And then immediately they latch on to that. So you'd think, like, is this, what's what's going on here? Is this Is this real or are they just fabricating things so they can resolve a case of some kind? Well, in Gladys's case, something that didn't benefit him was, you know, this is probably where the Willamette, Ironworks ended as far as going this direction, which I'm walking south now. So this would have been kind of the ending of the Willamette Ironworks. This is, you know, the general vicinity with where uh, Louis Vargas' body was found. Well, at the time of his death, A. Gladysy was living at, or at least staying, I don't know if he was living, but he was at least staying at First and Flanders, which First and Flanders is this intersection right here. So he was literally staying at a place it was called the Clarendon House, was was the name given in the papers. So I'm assuming it was probably, you know, these streets used to go all the way through to the river uh, before, you know, the freeway on ramps and well, max lines <laughs> came through here. These streets used to go straight through to the river. But yeah, this would have been first in Flanders. So Willamette Ironworks is all here and then somewhere over here is the Clarendon house where A. Gladys is living. So he lived right next to where the crime happened and he at least matches the race I guess of this individual because it seems like uh, this Paulson character like he said he saw Vargas leave the black man but didn't know who he was so this was still an un unnamed guy. Gladys he lives close by and they bring him in, they charge him, and you know, you're still thinking, like, they're bending this guy over a barrel. Like, what, what do they really have here? And then this jailhouse snitch comes out. Says, you know, pretty much right after Gladys he got put in jail, he shared a cell with this snitch, and almost right away, he immediately admitted to the murder, he admitted to this, he admitted to that, and you're thinking, okay, well, this guy's a jailhouse snitch. How can you believe anything this guy says? But one detail that he gave, what is happening? Every type of vehicle in the, there's... What is happening? I can't focus. Anyway, the key, th a key thing though, that this jailhouse snitch said was that Gladys he had taken Vargas's gold watch that I referenced earlier. He had a gold watch when he was found dead. The watch was gone. He said that Gladys he had stolen the watch and that Gladys he admitted to him that when the heat was on, I, I think the police probably came and arrested him at the house he was staying at. He said that, you know, to keep him looking suspicious, he ripped the kind of shirt portion of his, um, or the arm portion of his shirt off, wrapped the gold watch in it, and then reached out the window of his room and kind of tossed it up onto the roof of the Clarendon house to try to hide the watch. He said that Gladys, he admitted to doing this. So you think, well, that's a very definitive detail in this case. So if it's true, there should be a watch sitting up on top of the roof of the house. Authorities flock to this area, to the Clarendon house, find Gladys's room, stick their heads out, look up onto the roof, and lo and behold, they find a piece of shirt up there that they pull down, and they discover there's a gold watch wrapped up in it. So, rare instance where you got a jailhouse snitch who either was a clairvoyant or was just telling the truth at the end of the day. <laughs> so the murder, again, that happened, the Willamette Iron Works over here back in somewhat late June of 1902. By November 1902, Gladysy goes on trial. He's found guilty of manslaughter in the killing of Vargas. His, his argument, which they probably couldn't fully break, was that it was intended to be a robbery that turned into an accidental murder, and therefore it wasn't first degree murder, it wasn't second degree murder. Um, so he was found guilty of manslaughter and given 15 years in prison. And you know, when all is said and done, the biggest piece that they really have against uh, A. Gladys as being the killer of Lou, Louis Vargas is 
this watch that's found. You have a jailhouse snitch that says he, you know, wrapped this gold watch in a piece of his shirt and threw it on his roof. Well, Portland police, especially back in the day, had an extensive history of frame-ups, altering of evidence. I'm not saying this is what happened, but I'm saying when that's the biggest piece you have to go on, you could easily find out where Gladys he lived. You could easily, see, you don't even have to put a watch up on the roof. You can say the police found one, and if you have a piece of shirt and a piece of watch that you say, hey, this is all matches to him, it's a cinch. You've got him. And then you get a jailhouse snitch to say he did it. Now you have a reason to explain why the police went and searched on the roof of all places in relation to where this guy was living. That really, in the end, is the one thing that really tied him to the crime. I don't know if Gladys he ever openly it doesn't seem like he ever openly actually admitted to it except this jailhouse snitch guy seems to be the only guy that said yeah no he admitted he did it i don't think he admitted it in court nothing in the newspapers i read said that he openly admitted to it and i'm thinking okay so they're they're bending this guy you know if they're, if they're so certain that this guy did what he did and he's you know he's not even a white guy you'd think they would have just found him guilty of first degree murder like it's just the circumstances are very odd to lead it seems like you know if things really did go the way that they say they went it seems very interesting that they didn't get him on a harder charge and then what's of further interest is most cases I've seen wherein uh, it's been white people in these old uh, news stories that got charged maybe they were gonna get charged with first degree murder second degree murder ultimately just got found guilty of manslaughter they'd get like three to five years maybe ten years in the worst case but a Gladys he gets 15 years and I think I think that's just you know the racial aspect of the city at the time you know if it's a white guy we'll give him a little bit less so I don't know I I question very much the validity of the conclusions that were reached on this case. I really do. I things about it just bother me and you know kind of that the only thing that they were able to really use to convict this guy was this gold watch found on his roof. That especially back then the police could have just said, oh yeah we found a watch on the roof and this jailhouse snitch said it happened. Very easy to fake and unfortunately very common with what the Portland police were you know, they did a lot worse back in the day. So I don't know. Maybe he did it, but I'm not fully convinced. And there was actually another African-American gentleman by the name of Jackson, who was, who also apparently, I don't know if he lived in the area, but I guess he was just a known person to be in that area. And there was a witness who was in the vicinity of the Willamette Ironworks, really close to when these murders happened. And he said he saw a black man near the Willamette Ironworks. Uh, but when he was asked about who it might have been, he said it was this. He said that the guy he saw looked more like this Jackson guy than Gladysy. But you'd think, okay, they're both they're both black men. If they had more evidence to put on this Jackson guy why didn't they do it and if they didn't then that makes it seem more realistic that Gladys was the guy that did it um there's still god it's loud over here there's still going to be lingering questions about this crime at least in my head and that's where it kind of has to linger for right now so anyway from the the fringes of Chinatown uh thank you again so much for watching and uh, remember, as always, like, share, subscribe, comment if you want to. Hit up my Patreon if you want to help me that way. And all that said, everybody, thank you again for watching another... So loud over here. Another episode of Historic Murders of Portland. I'll see you next time.